Here we go. Look, I'm recording this at night. Hence the wine. I drink wine, but I don't drink wine every night. Like, this one bottle, 750 ml, whatever it is, this will last me like three to five days. Because I only drink like a, this much, let's see. Well, it's less than that, but I drink about that much, a little bit more. At night! And it's nighttime! Which means that the lighting might be that great, because I usually record, you know, when it's light and day, but it doesn't matter. Look. Mmm. Oh, by the way, it's a Shiraz wine. This is a South African Shiraz, but Shiraz. Now, if you know anything about Shiraz, which, well, maybe you do, but Shiraz, the original grape, you know, that whole Mediterranean area, as I mentioned, you know, the whole, you know, Greek, uh, they did North Africa, they did, you know, the, the heights and um, the Mediterranean, you know, um, that's the little grape, that's what the, the, the grapes, you know, they started there first. That's why my favorite wine is a Primitivo, where the grape comes from, from Greece, went to Rome, went, went to Italy, and that was the first grape in Italy, so they call it Primitivo, that's my favorite wine, it's a, it's a red wine too, but Shiraz is my, well, I can't get Primitivo here that much, but to the States I get Primitivo. But I like Shiraz. But Shiraz comes from a region, or a city, town, whatever, in uh, in Iran. Iran's in the news. Do you think they Do you think they want to beat up on Iran? Uh, that's, you think it's for pipelines or oil or something? No, nah, it may be for they want to take over the Shiraz region and all. Shiraz uh, uh, region and um, corner the market on Shiraz instead of oil. I don't know. But let's talk about the military for a second. My last story, my In fact, this is nighttime. I better put. I got to be covert here. This is. I'm gonna tell you some war stories when I was in the Air Force. Okay. Uh, maybe I should just tell you one. I just tell you one. I'll tell you the other one some other time when I had this thing with the with the wing commander. But uh, this has to do. Okay. As you may or may not know, when I joined the Air Force, I no, I was very. Uh, before I went to this is the sixties when they, this is when you were getting um, conscripted, you know your, your number go in a little thing and then your, your birth number go in a thing. They pick you up, you know one to three hundred sixty five, three hundred sixty six, whatever it is. And uh, and so what would happen is uh, if your number came up, you know, and then you, it, lo it was local draft boards, and in your area, you know, say for instance, I'm in the South Bronx. Okay, so a lot of the people eligible for, to go out and fight in the war in Vietnam, which is the era I'm talking about, well, they were like, you know, in jail, blah, 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 but whatever. They weren't around. So in the South Bronx, believe me, it doesn't matter what your number was. You think, oh, well, I'm number 115. I'm good. You know, well, that would be good if you was in, I don't know, wherever he was in. But if you were in South Bronx, you could be here 300, and, you could be number 300. Your behind was going into service because there was no other men in that in that draft board area. So that's why, that's why disproportionate, I don't, I don't know that for a fact. Anyway, so when I went in, I mean, I, I was very conscious because we, I would, tr before that, from my whole, like from, I went 60, well, I went in 70, so from base 68 to 70, I was very, before the war and everything, I knew everything was going on because we were trained, and I was in a little revolutionary group, and, uh, you know, we did some, um, well, did a lot of reading and whatever, but, um, but these two brothers changed, and they were they were Vietnam first. They were in they were in Vietnam like '64, whatever it is. They were in early on. They knew everything was going on, so I knew what the wars had the wars about. I knew policies, and everything. So yes, well, why did you go into the Air Force? Well, like I said, I didn't want really to be conscripted. And like, it's kind of interesting. I didn't. I certainly wasn't going to run out of the country. That's for sure. I didn't. I, I wasn't going to go to jail because well, I'm not a jail kind of person. But you know, I wasn't going to. I wasn't a conscientious objector at that particular point. So I had reasons, but, but but something happens. I, this happens a lot in my life. Sometimes I'm rationally I'm thinking of something, but what's happening is the spirit is saying, nope, we're gonna have something else for you to do. And that's what happened. So I was in the Air Force. I won't get into the whole details, but I was in the Air Force, I became a lab technician, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, when I got to my, my regular, you know, was, uh, first I was you know Lackland Air Force Base is the basic training, then I went to Shepard for, um, for some training for for uh, medical training or whatever, and I became a lab technician, lab technician school. Then I went to the phase two training, which is with the practicals, as you, you, everything you learned for those. It was like six hours a day for six days a week. That's what that was your school, whatever your school you use, and it would concentrate on that. That's how the military gets over. They don't, they don't forget the electives and the, you. If you were doing the sound sonar, you do sonar. If you do air traffic control, you do air. If you're a lab technician, you lab technician. That's it. You ain't nothing else. Okay. So. Um, 
So phase two training was right past an Air Force base. Now here's this interesting, about go back to this thing, why I went into the Air Force by I'm going to get into that some other time. But I was watching a documentary of uh, Muhammad Ali, and, uh, and a guy, uh, uh, that guy from the Star Ledger, that uh, I used to follow him because uh, I, used to follow, I used to read the Star Ledger, and from New Jersey. Anyway, he, 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 went, to, he went to visit, uh, he went to, uh, uh, visit uh, uh, Muhammad Ali when he was doing that fight with, him with Ernie Shavis, whoever was up in, up in uh, Terrell, whoever was up in, um, up in Toronto. And, and, and Muhammad Ali, so the story goes, well, he said the story, Muhammad said, what are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. I said, you know, this ain't no real fight. I'm just blah, 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 blah. And he said, well, I want to see if you were going to not come back to the country. And he said it was the only time that Muhammad Ali really got angry at him or really expressed some sort of whatever. And he said to him, he got, up, he got or he was being massaged on a, by a Cuban. He was being massaged. And he got up off the table, went and, and, and sat in this guy's face and said, how, how I'm, I'm not going to leave this country, you know. Basically, basically say, I built this country. I'm, I, I belong here. I built it. I ain't going no place. Sound like ADUS? Hey, Muhammad Ali was ADUS way before everybody. Okay. Anyway, so that was his thing. Okay. Now here's the thing. Uh, when when I was in the Air Force, I started. I started a group called the Black Caucus. Okay, I'm talking about when I was in McGuire for space. And uh, it was a very, it's a political group, da 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 da, but we did a lot of community service and stuff like that. Anyway, let me cut to the chase. But we were so feared, because remember the Black Caucus, the Congressional Black Caucus had just started forming. So I don't know why we call ourselves the Black Caucus, because the Black Caucus, that's what we call it. It's a black airman. But the Air Force Base, uh, the McGuire Air Force Base was unique, or, or our thing was, at least the medics were unique, because they came from all brands. Like we had, we had Marines, we had, um, we had, um, then we did have, yeah, we had Marines, we had um, a Navy, we had our Army, and of course Air Force, all in this, doing this uh, blood banking, we were doing this blood banking thing, was, the medical unit was, was whatever. So, so consequently, when we started Black Caucus, we had people from all different branches of the service, right? Okay, well the base was getting a little bit uh, antsy about our, about being the Black Caucus, let's put it that way. And of course they knew, they knew a lot of us, just a second, let me just wipe those, they knew a lot of us because well, we were known. I was in a group called the Loftier Race. That or another, no, it's Loftier. It was three guys uh, uh, Chicken Man, Ron Thompson, myself, and then we had like three people, three and, and D'Artagnan was like Bucky. And uh, but that was us. And we were like, different, we, would, we were in different areas. Like, we were different, like, 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 like uh, uh, Ron and I. We were more like the intellectuals. Uh, 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 Chicken Man was was whatever. Bucky was the lover. It was really interesting. We we it was really interesting. Four different brothers doing f four different areas, but coming together. Okay, for coming together. So, but the, but the Black Caucus was a bunch of us. Man, it was about time about thirty five people, maybe around about that. Anyway, there was so the, the, the what happened was um, the highest ranking Black man on Magoria Officer Space was the head of the SP, Special Police, well, Military Police for you, but it's Air Force's Special Police. Uh, what was his name? I forgot. Uh, I know, but my lab, I was a lab technician. One of my lab technicians was going out with his daughter, you know. Uh, she, he was black and his daughter was black. He was white, but it was Air Force, it was, even though it was like 72 or 3 or whatever it was. Uh, that's, what, that's what it was. Anyway, so he was a colonel. I think full bird colonel. So he was the highest ranking black man on McGuire Air Force Base. Now McGuire Air Force Base is surrounded by Fort Dix. It's a huge base with a huge hospital. I was in a dispensary. That's why we never had anything to do. If it was really a big time emergency, we said dispensary. Men don't belong in dispensary. We sent them over to, to, uh, to um, wherever, uh, uh, Fort Dix. Wherever it was. Fort Dix. Yeah, Fort Dix. Okay, anyway. Uh, so what happened was they went Instead of sending uh, uh, Stanton, I think his name was Stanton, instead of sending uh, Colonel Stanton over to us, you know, because he's the highest man player, to talk to us, they went to the Army base and got this general. I, thought, I guess they thought it was be, going to be impressed because of some general comes over to us. So we had, we had, we had regular meetings. So we, so we said, sure, he can come to our meeting. His name, and I'll reveal his name later. I always remember this guy. So we, we, we had some sort of, we went back and forth, back and forth in our little meeting. And then finally, at the end, he got so frustrated. 
Because I'm talking about the, the brothers, the brothers, look, the brothers that were in the Air Force, well, Air Force, the brothers in the military in the 60s, in, in the Vietnam era, the reason why that war didn't go, because we were thinking, and, and there were a whole bunch of other stuff happening. Anyway, they were afraid of us. Black Hawk was afraid of us, think about it but all the time, but Black Panthers were going on, they were getting their demise, but a whole bunch of stuff was happening. Okay. So this guy comes over, and we're going back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to cut to the chase now. Upshot, he got so frustrated that he tried to storm out. The, he was trying, trying to storm out the meeting. Now, I have to tell you, I've been involved with a lot of organizations. The organization I start usually is with somebody, with other people, whatever have you. I'm never the, the top person. But I'm always the troublemaker in the crowd. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, contrarian, outliers, outlier, whatever you want to call me. So I'm just do have me. I'm, I'm, I'm every once in a while popping up. That guy, he storms. I call him. Remember, I remember it clear as day right now. He storms out. He's coming out the meeting, and I'm standing over someplace because you know, thing, and he stops right in front of me, just like, just like that captain stopped in front of me when I was in it, when I was in basic training because something happened. He started cursing me out and went away. Blah blah blah. Anyway, this guy stopped right. Me. He looked me in the eye. He said, "You people." I think he said, "You people." Or you, you all, something like that. I'm gonna say you. I'm gonna say you people. Uh, I like you all. Y'all will never tear down this country. Because I guess we were talking about, hey, this can't, I don't know what we were talking about. All I know is, you will never tear down this country. He, he said, I, he, went, he was like ballistic. And then he said, I will see you, our deal will be a fence. I will see you on the other side of the fence. And he stormed out. He said, well, we looked around. Of course, you know, let me tell you something. If you are a, if you are a real service person, if you were in the military, in the military, I'm talking about, and you had, and you dealing with all kinds of people, all kinds of competence, incompetence. One thing you learn: fear is not an option. None of us was afraid of nobody. You could be the big general. Da, 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 da. We show you respect, but hey, you know who you talking to? Do you know who you talking to? You're not paying me to be here. You pay me something, but you know, I'm here because you are. Anyway, so that's what happened. So I don't. They left us alone. Let me put it. They left us. That the last time we saw that general, everybody left. The, the, the whole command, they just left us alone. We did good things though, don't get me, we weren't troublemakers. They just they just were afraid of black people getting together. That's, they were afraid of black people getting together. We did a lot of things. We did, well, we did these uh, fundraisers. We, we did lead poisoning in Brooklyn. I don't have to, sometimes, we did a whole bunch of good community things. We had this concert one time, it was amazing because one of the, one of the people organized was Tony McBride, my man. We was, well, anyway, he was a hustler from, from Philadelphia. And we put on this fantastic show with the, da, 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 da. I'll go to the show some other time. Anyway, because this is about this general, that when he retired from the general, he was the, I think it was the second head of the, um, uh, What's that, FEMA? FEMA, when you have a disaster, he was the second head of FEMA, the, I guess the first black head or whatever it is, of, of FEMA, FEMA. Here he is, I always remember. His name was, I think it was Julius, his first name. Julius Becton, General Becton. Now, I don't call people's names, you know, he, wasn't a, he, he was doing what he was doing, following orders, following the white man's orders, following the orders, whatever, where he was up, but following military orders, let us forget the white man's so I don't blame him for what he was doing, but guess what? That didn't stop us from doing. It. And just because they sent him over, think they want to, they want to dazzle us with some, 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 uh, you know, a star. He was a one-star guy, a, a star, or dazzle us with here, here's where you could be a, a, a big time. That, that wasn't us. We was about actually what, what, what Black Caucus was about. We was about our peoples. We did things in the service for the black community in Philadelphia, in New York. Or, uh, in, we did, we did stuff. Right, and nobody bothered us. So, General Beckton, I don't know if he's still, I, 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 I don't know if he's still alive, but Beckton, wherever you are, heaven, heck, purgatory, or just cold in the ground, I'm not in jail yet, and we still fighting. I don't know what you're doing, but we still fighting. The power of the military, that's what people need, but we, you know, we're going to fight with something else. We, V, me. T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet. At a desk of the ADOS, the fighters, the American descendants of chattel slavery. We've been fighting our whole time we've been here. And it's coming to a head now. It's coming to a head.